All right. Andrew's here at the Bakery Steel Studio. Today we are making puppy pizza and puppy pizza dough. So two things. And hope you love this class. If you have questions, let's get to them at the end. I'll just, you know, we'll scroll through them, hopefully get to all of them. Uh, you guys rock. Thanks for being here. Let's have some fun. Um, I'm going to get right into making and mixing the dough. I'm going to go with the top down. I'm going to mix the dough, show you how I do it. I know any veterans here who have done this um, a bunch of times, but I'm making dough anyway, so I'll use it for tomorrow or Friday. Just thought I'd, I'd walk it through my process. So let's, let's do it. Oh, and before I get started, the flour I'm using today, really highly recommend it. Um, this is from Central Milling. It's a bread flour. It's outstanding. It's probably my favorite that we have, a flour that we use. And it's organic. And we'll link to where you can get it. It's amazing. All right. So let's go to the top down here. You can see what I'm doing. If you've made dough with us before, this recipe, I'm using it. I always like to use a scale. I just think it's super important. Um, we can make a dough without a scale. I'm not making that one today, but again, super important piece of equipment. Um, I've got my flour. I've got a different container. I, I don't have enough of the cool containers. So I got to use this bigger one. Um, there we go. All right, so this is my flour. It's already pre-measured. I got 500 grams of um, flour. So what I'm going to do is next, I'm going to take some salt and just add in 16 grams of sea salt, which is about, I'm going to put it in my hand so you can see what I'm doing here. But it looks like that. It's a big like clump of salt. So I pour this in, right? And now what I'm going to do is take a whisk. I have one. A whisk here or something. Take a whisk and just whisk my salt around. I'm going to take some active dry yeast, which looks like this. I like these jars. I'm going to use one gram of active dry yeast. I'll show you what that looks like in my hand. So here's my hand. You can see it's about the size of a, maybe a, a dime, maybe a nickel, maybe a nickel. Not a lot, right? Put my yeast in and I can kind of shake it or whisk it. Okay, and now I'm gonna take some water. And I use filtered water. And I'm gonna go back on my scale here. Right? I'm gonna put my scale on 350 grams, which looks like this, okay? Pour it in, filtered water. I'm at two, I'm at 338, 356. A little, not bad, right? My scale away. And now I'm just gonna take a dough scraper and kind of mix this around. I'm just kind of hydrating the flour and the water together. And then all I'm gonna do is, once it starts to stick together, I'll get, put one hand in. Again, if you followed me before, I'm gonna use one clean hand and one hand for kneading. Always keep one hand dry for emergency phone calls, or if you have to grab something out of the refrigerator, you name it, something. But you can see I'm scraping. I still have one hand clean, and one hand is my flour hand, if you will. And all I'm doing is pressing the flour and the water together just so this doesn't form any dry clumps. And I do this for about, if I haven't done it before, for about two or three minutes. That's it. And next, what I'll do, and I try to scrape all the sides, get it all in there. If I wanted to clean out my container, I could do that. Or you can see it's starting to get a little more wet. Next thing, what I'll do is I'm going to take um, 
when all my doughs flowers in there together. I might do this for like an extra minute if I wasn't on video right now, but I think that'll give you an idea of what I'm trying to do. I will take my cover. That's it. My flour is done. My dough is mixed. That's it for 24 hours. After 24 hours, tomorrow, like around noon, I'm going to take that container and place it in my fridge. And I will leave that container in the fridge until the day I make pizza, which would be two, maybe, maybe one day, 24 hours, 48 hours, or even 72 hours. I might even go 96 hours. Um, that's about four days is about the max to make it really awesome. Um, after four days, I might make some pizza or whatever. Uh, but I might even make a big batch and just take one or two out at a time. I may, I may make one pizza Friday night and put it back in the fridge and then remove on Saturday, take one more dough ball, make my ball, and then just let that sit for about four hours, which is what we got here, right? I made two bulk dough balls this morning around 7 a.m. They've been proofing in the final proof, which is why I love these containers. Um, I actually did this at my rental house and I, um, I am bringing these, I brought a good minute at home and then I brought them in and they've been proofing in this box ever since. So it kind of traveled a little bit. Awesome. So now we can get into making a pizza, a puppy pizza. And first I have preheated my oven. I've got two baking steel, two baking steel originals, one on the top shelf and one on the bottom shelf. Two steel is not necessary. I like two because I like to use the broiler, which is what we'll see in just a few minutes. Um, my oven's been preheating for one hour, maybe one and a half hours at 450. And the reason I do 450 over 500 is because when I use the broiler, it's an electric oven. When I, when I turn it on, it's gonna kick on almost simultaneously, like super fast. If I preheated it and someone else might have an oven like this too, these ovens are now intelligent. When they get super hot at like say 500, the broiler will not kick in right away. So we outsmart it, it's electronics, right? AI, we outsmart, not for long, by the way. Um, we outsmart it. And then um, when I do fire the broiler, it seems to go on pretty quick. So you'll see that when we get to it. So let's go through the pizza making process. I'm gonna take you through the exact steps that I do top down again. Um, again, get to your question. We'll get to those at the end. Uh, let's, let's do this, let's make some pizza. Uh, actually, first, yeah, actually, we're going to do it here. I'll do this. Um, I have shredded up. There's my dough. I have my tomatoes. I'm going to show you how I make tomato sauce really quick. Um, I would typically have this done before I make my pizza, but I want to show you how simple the sauce is. And these are Bianco di Napoli tomatoes crushed. I'm going to open up this jar here. Super skilled level here. Right. Once I open it up, move this thing. It's sharp. Ah, okay. Now I'm going to take my salt, sea salt again. Right. You can see. I'm going to use about 10 grams, which is about this much. Dump it in my container, and then just mix, mix it up. That's it, guys. That's my tomato sauce. Really easy. All right, so my tomatoes are done. Put those aside. My dough is ready. So I'm going to flour my surface here. And you can use, I like to use a combination of flour and maybe semolina flour, right? Kind of mix it around there, just like that. I'm going to take one of my doughs out of here. One thing I'd like to do about um, my dough container here is, this comes in really handy. Take it out and pop it right down in the flour. Now what I'll do is, might put a little dusting on top. I'm gonna turn it over like this, right? Just so it won't stick. And now you can see this dough is gonna feel like a cloud. It's super soft and supple. 
And the tricky to puppy pizza is to not, not to stretch it out too far. So I'm gonna lightly press, just lightly and gingerly press, and I'll make sure it's not sticking, right? I might even turn the other side over. Just give it a little press too, but usually I just work on the one side. And you can see it's starting to form like a circle. I guess lightly pressed. This is a 240 gram dough ball, so it's not very big. I could, I could stretch this out to 14 or like 12, or in this case, I'm gonna do about nine or 10 inches because I'm gonna make it pretty small. And now what I'll do is when it gets to be kind of formed, I'm gonna pick it up the back of my knuckles and just let gravity do its thing here. You can see my hands are just kind of turning and letting gravity work. Each time I stretch it, I'm gonna give you this camera view so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You can see I'm just kind of rotating it, my knuckles, and I'm really, I have the size that I want. So let's go back and look at this, not me. You can see that, isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? Really gen gentle, I'm being really gentle with my dough. So now I'm gonna take a pizza peel, you need to have a wood peel for these launches, okay? I'm gonna dust it with semolina flour. Right? And maybe just a little bit of flour. Just like that. Set that aside. I'm gonna place my dough right on top as I clean my work surface off. And I can really put this flour back into my flour container. And there is my pizza. Before I do sauce, before I do anything else, I want to give this dough a little jiggle. Just like it's sliding like a hockey puck. That's probably the most important thing if you're new to launching that you need to be aware of. And now what I can do is if I want, I can pinch these edges a little bit just to make it a little unique. I really like this form and shape over here. Really cool. It might maybe one last little stretch. Boom. That's it. Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? Now I know it's, it's still sliding. So now it's time to, to um, the top. I'm going to take a little bit of sauce, right? Just a little bit. Swish it around. I bring sauce to the edge but not over the edge, just like life, right? And I'll go into my fridge. I'm gonna drop a little Romano cheese, some grated cheese on top here, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna drop my shredded cheese. This is low moisture mozzarella. Again, less is more, right? Just a little bit, that nice. And now I'm gonna take some fresh mozzarella and I like to rip this by hand, if you will, just a tiny bit. Again, less is more. Now, before I go close to my oven, or even think about my oven, I'm gonna make sure I give this thing a jiggle again. See how it's jiggling? I'm assured now that I can get this thing into the oven without any uh, unintentional calzones. A little bit of cheese, love it. Now, let's go back to this camera so you guys can see me again, I apologize. All right, now my pizza's made, right? It's loose like a puck. I'm gonna go over to my oven. I'm gonna put it on broil. Broil at, if I have a low and a high setting on my oven and I set it to hot and I like, I like um, heat. My baking steel is about seven inches from the broiler, which is like, to me, it's the second rack. And what I also like is um, it's gonna fire up really fast, okay? Seven inches from the broiler. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait for that broiler to turn red. This is an electric oven, so it has those, those coils on top. When those things are fire red, that's when I launch. I wait, I'm gonna be patient um, before I launch. I could go in earlier if I want, but I'm not gonna get the same heat that I really love on my launch. This pizza looks beautiful too. Really light, really light on my, my, my toppings. I can't stress that enough. 
Less is more on top. Really go light. I'm going to give my oven a peek here. My boiler is just starting to fire up now. It's, it's like, it's like uh, almost purple. When it turns red, I'm going in. And I use the boiler for the first two minutes of this. Um, once I launch, we'll get to some questions too. Again, before I go into my oven, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna give this thing one more shake. And it's actually, you know what? It's getting a little stuck. Let me show you what I do here because that was an important step, right? So you can see when I, when I jiggle, like this corner here is getting a little bit stuck. So I will pick it up and just stick some more semolina underneath there, right? Just so it doesn't get stuck. Now look at that, it's sliding again, just like a puck. But right, now I can go into the oven. One last look, is that beautiful? And it's go time. One hand, I have a rag, one hand, I have my peel. I'm just gonna lightly peel it off, watch. All right, ready? My, my rag comes back, I'm sliding off. And I'm gonna put my timer on, two minutes. I set my timer, really critical to use your timer when you have the boiler on. Believe me, I've, I've learned that lesson the hard way. Let's get to some questions. Uh, awesome. Henry from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Yeah, we'd love to have you come out and visit us. <laughs> awesome, love the classes, great. We can do some live too. We're gonna do those in the fall, live classes. We're gonna bring people in, it's gonna be amazing. Um, how much water was in the dough? So this is, and again, we will follow up with all the ingredients for this recipe, but it's 500 grams of flour and we use 350 grams of water and that's 70%. So if you divide that, it's 70% hydration. That's really a higher level um, hydration. It's not for beginners, but you guys can handle it, even if you are. Um, and another question is here, I make any leftover dough into the bread. Oh, that's a good idea. So yeah, a great question. So if I have, it's almost like a statement, but if I have um, leftover dough, it makes incredible bread, bread sticks, pizza, you name it. It's great. Um, can you freeze the dough after 24 hours of rest? Great question. Again, my strategy for freezing dough, let's say I just mix that dough and let's say I'm going away this weekend, starting tomorrow. I will remove the dough. Um, actually, I will ball it up tomorrow. I won't even go into the fridge. I'll make my dough balls and freeze it right away. The trick is to make, to freeze it at the point um, of the dough balls being made. That's like the secret. And if I know I'm freezing dough, I might add a smidgen more yeast because the yeast can die in the freezer. So instead of one gram, I might stick two grams in there. Don't tell anybody else these secrets. Um, you use convection bake for pizza and all pizzas, correct. I always use convection. In fact, I use convection for everything I make. I just feel it just the fan helps blow that um, the air around and makes it really nice to eat. Let's take a peek. That's been two minutes. Oh, we got some nice color coming out. I'm gonna rotate um, and turn my boiler off and go back to convection at 500 degrees now. I'm going to 500 and start. So it's been two minutes. I'm only using one steel, even though I have two. I turn my broiler off and I'm gonna bake this for about two more minutes um, until it's done. And now the bottom's gonna catch up to the top. Because my broiler, is that check? Yeah, my broiler is now off, which is awesome. And now it's just gonna finish on convection bake. My timer on. I'm just gonna do one more minute just because I'm not gonna cook it all the way through because we're gonna save this for later. Um, oh, good question. Is 96 hours the longest I would keep dough balls in the fridge? I would keep the bulk of dough in the fridge for 96 hours, not dough balls, because dough balls will start to proof and then overproof. That's why we like to keep, this is like version 2.0 of our um, recipe. We like to keep it, in the bulk form. Then we make our dough balls the day of making pizza. So yes, I would keep a bulk of dough in the fridge for 96 hours, no problem. When during the process do you rest for four hours? Great question again. I'll take the dough, um, I'll remove it from the fridge 
and then I'll make my dough balls. And the nice thing about these containers is I made my dough balls and just place them right back in my container and let this sit covered for you know two or three hours. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, three or four hours, maybe five hours. Um, it's important to cover. If you don't have one of these containers, you can use. You could also use. Um, you could also use like a sheet tray. Put a, a wet rag on top or some plastic wrap. Just keep it airtight because we don't want the air hitting it. It gets a little crusty. Let's take that pizza out. And check it out. Forgot what to so this has been, it's probably almost on the bottom. You can see, right? We show you the top down. What do we got here? Sorry, it's right here. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? You can't, uh, I mean, the bubbles is just awesome, right? If I flip it over really quick, you can see the bottom's quick and cooked. Boom. Well, now I can take a little bit, that's a nice basil if I want. I could take a little bit of basil, pop some basil on top, right? If you like basil, I'd like, at this point, I can also take a little bit of olive oil, a little sprinkle of olive oil on top. And it's just prime time. I could cook this for one more minute on the bottom. It really doesn't even need it. It's awesome. It smells incredible. See that light hit that? Isn't that great? Beautiful. Place that down and get to some more questions for you guys. Doesn't that look good? Amazing. Gorgeous. Really nice bubbles here forming. Cheese melted beautifully. It's great. Um, I used a, a whole milk, low moisture mozzarella. I shredded it myself. That's really important um, to shred it yourself because when we take the the, the shredded cheese from the supermarket, it's already pre-shredded. It doesn't stick to each other. In order for that to happen, they have to use a starch around those shreds. And those starches tend to brown too early in the cooking process. So by shredding it, that gets eliminates that, makes it awesome. Uh, let's see, what else have you got there? How long in the oven after broiler turned off and up to? So we did this one for literally like, a minute and 10 seconds after the boil. So this bake time was about three minutes, which is phenomenally fast. And that's because the baking steel is transferring that heat super fast. This is about a three minute pie. You could, I would probably go like another 40 seconds on, on this one here, just to get a little bit more crispy on the bottom, but it's really awesome. It's, it's done. So every oven's gonna be different too. So be mindful. Um, Two minutes with the broiler seems to be adequate on most ovens I've worked with, but it might even take two and a half. Just until you learn the cycle of your oven, you're gonna need to keep kind of bird dogging it with either a light or a uh, opening it up, peeking inside. The less we open the oven up, the better off we are. How does the puffy pizza differ from your regular pizza? So I, this as you can see, it's got a really nice like cornicone. It's really got some nice, air inside. I didn't stretch. I could have also, let me show you this again, this picture here, you can see, you can see this is, this is, this peels 14 inches. So this, this pizza is probably like nine, it's not perfectly round, good job. Um, I could have stretched this out the entire length of the, the peel or the diameter of the peel and it would have been a, a thinner crust, right? It still would have had a nice, it would have had a crust on it, but not not as um, puffy, if you will. I can make it puffier than this too, which is awesome. I just wouldn't stretch it as much, or I'd use more dough and less stretch. So it's a kind of me playing with how I want to, you know, visualize my pizza being made. I hope that helps. Uh, where are the recordings on YouTube? Good question. Um, we'll link to our channel tomorrow in the follow up email. I think it's under my name, Andres Lagston, Baking Steel. You'll see us. Uh, I am in there. We got all of these classes in there and a lot of shorts and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, if you um, find us on YouTube, follow us and you'll get all the updates. Uh, let's see, what if you don't have a broiler that would fit a pizza pan? Hmm, I don't know what you mean by that. Meaning you don't have a, you don't have a broiler in your oven? 
Uh, we'll get to that one in a second. Why do you use a wooden peel instead of a metal peel? Great question. Wood absorbs some of the water in the dough. So when I go to launch and I kind of do that little jiggle thing, it's gonna slide a lot more easy than metal. Metal will tends to stick. Um, metals, like the professionals use metals in the Neapolitan ovens, th those guys are amazing. They make hundreds of pizzas almost daily. So they've got a lot of experience. We find at home, um, wood is perfect for the launch. And by the way, I will slice my pizza right on this peel and I'll serve it right on the peel. That's it. That way I'm not using other plates. Um, this peel is super durable, it's cherry wood. I've made probably, gosh, hundreds and hundreds of pieces on this one peel right here. And I've got no, it's showing no signs of like damage. It's great. Uh, let's see, I have a, okay. Oh, you have a separate broiler compartment in the main oven. Okay, so you have a bottom, I'm guessing a bottom broiler in the bottom of your oven. I would just do a straight bake in your main oven for like four or five minutes. At the very end, leave your steel in the oven, just move your pizza to the broiler side so you can get a little color on top. That's all, that's the only thing I would do different. How would you clean the baking steel? Great question. It cleans super easy. Um, soap and water, I, I've got a cleaning video I wanna show you guys, but soap and water, scrape it off. If it gets sticky or touchy tacky at all, just scrape it. The backside of a sponge does a good job. We also sell these, um, uh, actually we don't even sell them, but cleaning bricks. These are amazing. They're, they're grills, but we find it works amazing for the steel. I'm trying to get some close, um, but these are great. They're made out of recycled glass and it just kind of lightly scour it. It just keeps my steel smooth all the time. And we'll uh, link to that too. Uh, thank you. Someone has the wood peel. It's beautiful. It is. Are there any more questions, you guys? We want to eat this pizza. Okay. Um, thank you for being here. You guys are amazing. As usual, your questions are amazing. Pizza's amazing. Everyone's amazing. Uh, everything's great. Uh, thanks for being here. We will follow up with this uh, tomorrow on an email. And if you guys have any questions ever, I am Andrus at bakingsteel.com. That's A-N-D-R-I-S. Happy to answer your questions. Uh, you guys rock. Thank you. Thank you, guys.